Namaste, my friends, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor, and I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening or their ascension process. And today, I'm going to share with you five last things that you should know about the 2017 Ascension Energies. Number one is filling up our own cup. What I mean by that is so many people who watch my channel, people who resonate with the whole idea of being uh, you know, a light worker here to help, here to spread awareness and love and, and, and consciousness and, and good vibes, essentially. There's, a, there's an affliction most of us possess, and I think you'd admit this to yourself in hearing it. It's that we tend to overextend ourselves. We tend to give too much. We don't often enough fill up our own cup. I'm this way all the time. It seems the moment I get a little bit of juice in my cup, I, I'm looking at who, who can, what, how, what can I do with it? How, how can I express it? How can I create with it? How can I share? Some, how can I share it in some way? I never like let it get to the top or even halfway. But it's not a wise way. I also understand logically it's not a wise way to be effective because just like I love the uh, oxygen mask analogy, if there's a plane that's about to crash, you put on your own oxygen mask first. Otherwise, if you suffocate and you, you're, of no, you're no good to anybody. If we're always exhausted or at a subpar level of energy, then we're not able to as much as we, we don't have available our potential energy to give. And the awakening or the ascension can very quickly, through, I've had this theme come up a gazillion times and it usually will remind me this by getting a, a cold or just feeling exhausted for no reason, just a, a fatigue. I was speaking to a woman just recently and she said she gets a flare up of, of shingles when, when she's doing too much. So I think we all have kind of our own cues, our own physical cues that that kind of let us know we're in some way we're, we're expending more energy than we're taking in. But what helps me take more in because it seems unnatural because I just like to share as you guys know um, is to just remind myself that that's not the best way to go about things. You're not doing as much good as you possibly can if that's your goal, which it is. So it's like, okay, I'm going to make myself go. I've been taking these taking a bath lately, taking these like Epsom salt baths. I'll put on, I'll light some candles and some incense and play some like Pink Floyd or some like chill out, chill and chill out music. And it's like, uh, it's hard though. I find myself when I do that, I get in the zone. I, I feel really good and I start to recharge. And immediately I'm like getting video ideas. I'm getting ideas. I, I want to have my notebook, but it's like, no, just sit here and do nothing and fill up your own cup. So if you guys relate with that, then maybe you can take the advice and we can, all, we can all take this advice and hopefully have more energy to give in this coming year. Number two is evolving and expanding your consciousness in your own unique, preferred way. That's kind of the name of the game here, is to evolve ourselves. We, a lot of people wake up, they see the numbers, they have some kind of awakening experience and they realize that they have been... They chose to come here to help, to help other people by raising their awareness or consciousness or vibration, however you want to look at it. But there's so many different ways to do that. And I'd, what I've realized is that there is, there is no one way and to find whatever works for you because whatever you really prefer, that's what's going to be the most effective anyways rather than copying someone who maybe you, you like their energy and you say, well, they do that. Um, that might just because that's work. That might work for them. You do what works for you. What I dig, I like to meditate every day. I like the plant medicines, the ayahuasca, and the magic mushrooms. I'd like to take those periodically to help demolish my ego temporarily and, and heal. It's it's a it's kind of more to some people's mind maybe an extreme way, but it's a it's a valid way that that really works well for me. I like it. I I seem to benefit from it quite a bit. But what do you like? Maybe that's it doesn't matter. What do you like? Do you like painting? Do you like yoga? Do you like Reiki, massage? Um, you do what works for you. But it's just my sense. I feel like going into this next year, people are going to have more of a maybe a natural excitement about this, like a, a, a renewed interest. Like kind of like me, I, I I haven't like taken a psychedelic in a long time, but then I 
been doing them lately and I'm just like re, I'm reminded about how much I like them. So I think there'll be a, a, an increased interest in that kind of thing. Also, more of a sense of like, I don't want to say obligation because that seems like it's a burden, but more of like a sense of duty, a sense of purpose that will, it's necessary at this time for people who are aware that there is actually ways that you can change your vibration and therefore affect the collective in a positive way. I feel like people who are aware of that are going to start to kind of feel like I'm, I should do that because it's the right thing to do. Number three is balance. A lot of us are going through a little bit of imbalance as a way to reveal to ourselves what we've been unconsciously uh, habits and, and, and attitudes and beliefs we've been unconsciously perpetuating that cause that's the core reason for our imbalance sometimes that can become agitated that process uh, temporarily making us feel way out of balance only so that we can discover it at the root so we can release it, integrate it, heal it, and then thereby become much more balanced. This could just be in a practical, in a practical way. Nothing too heavy sometimes. Like me, I've been kind of toying around with my with my diet and my daily routine and my schedule and what to do, trying to like balance, have my the energy, my finite reservoir of physical vitality and energy be dispersed in the most efficient and productive way. And when I'm, and when there's been things I've been doing that are not really ideal for me, it's been, you know, exhausting me or, or burning me out or giving me like sometimes, you know, I, I've been sick a couple times in the last two weeks. Little things like that as a way to kind of keep me in alignment and make me aware of where I'm not balanced. So a lot of us are finding that, especially now we're like, we're like doing too much. We're overextending ourselves. We're not filling up our own cup. And that can sometimes manifest with you feeling sick. And this, you could be having this sort of process play out in many different ways in your life. And, but it's important to look at it as that. If you see it as a, as a helpful cycle, that's going to help you become more balanced and probably more energized and happier then you don't have to see the temporary manifestations that create that awareness that allow you to have that end effect as a problem. You don't have to feel like, oh man, I'm not balanced anymore. No, 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 maybe, but if that's the case, then look at it and say why. You'll find the reason why now. Number four is kind of an interesting one that I've noticed off and on throughout my awakening. It's, I'll call it an awareness of our unconscious self-fulfilling prophecies. Sometimes we run into to like what feel like blocks in our in our in our in our go, what we try to do with our life in a phys, in a practical physical way. We we get blocked where there's like cycles of situations that just seem to like stand in our way of doing what we want to do. I'll give an example. I would say like three or four months ago, I bought a new TV for the where I used to live. And I, it was a brand new TV and I was hooking it up and it dropped. It, it, I kind of like set it on the couch and it slid off as I was like, I was gonna mount it and it slid off and like cracked. And I was like, oh my goodness, why did this happen? I was so mad, a brand new TV cracked. And then when we went to go buy another one, it was just all these weird problems. We bought a second one and we brought it back and the, the size wasn't right. We had to t return it. And it was just, it, be it became this whole, this whole ordeal. But I realized because there was a part of me that felt like I shouldn't be watching TV. Watching TV is not very spiritual and it's bad for me. And even though there's a, a part of me that genuinely enjoys television, certain TV shows, and I like to lot, watch a lot of documentaries on Netflix, and I subscribe to that guy, the guy on uh, TV. A lot of good stuff. It's not a problem. But there's a part of me that's like, oh, oh no, Vic, that's not good. So there's that unconscious self-fulfilling prophecy saying it's not good. Well, then it's not going to be good. We're going to save you from yourself, Victor, because part of you says it's not good to watch TV. So we're going to hook you up being the universe, and we're going to break that than that TV, so you don't have to, you don't have to uh, act out of alignment. But the part of me, it wasn't that TV's bad. That I used to take those situations and say, "Wow, I guess I shouldn't be watching TV. Maybe it is bad." I used to like see that as signs from the universe, because sometimes they can come in that way. 
but there becomes a level of awareness that you will develop naturally where you'll start to be able to discern. Are you blocking yourself or is the universe giving you a sign to say, hey, don't do that? In this case, I was blocking myself. And I've been, I've been having, at least for me, I've been having different self-fulfilling, um, you know, misaligned beliefs playing out in a physical way, again, as a way to help me release them. So I don't see that as a problem either. It can be kind of frustrating when you, when you have the inner conflict. But w whenever it gets like to a boiling point, it means you're about to transcend it and, and decide which way you want to go. And then once you do that, you can let go of the, the misaligned belief and then have actual clearance to do what you really do want to do. Lastly, I think we're in a cycle of important, like big secrets within the collective starting to come to light. I feel like back in 2012, there was a big push for disclosure and there was like the Occupy Wall Street and there was a big bang of awareness about all the different corruption going on on the planet, but it never seemed to really progress. It was like it stretched up and then it sank back down for a while. But I feel like it's stretching up again. I feel like it's, uh, uh, for whatever reason, we're gonna start seeing more, more, uh, more secrets like that, big secrets that have a, an impact on like the whole mindset of the collective start to, to come to light more and more and more. And that's exciting because I think that once it starts to trickle in, there can be a massive ripple effect, a real, a real true awakening where people wake up to sort of the tyranny that's been taking place on the planet and just how, mis how, how, how uh, closed off the masses are from what actually exists in our reality bubble here and now. And I think it's going to be very, very just fascinating and interesting to see how this next year unfolds. Anyways, that's it, my friends. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support and your love and just being there this whole last year. Many of you have been watching me for a long time. And I just want to, regardless, I want to thank all of you uh, just, for, just for being in my life. I know you guys remind me that you appreciate me in your life and you appreciate the videos. And I'm glad and I'm flattered. But I appreciate you guys. A lot of you guys are alone and you don't have friends and family to talk to, but I can go on right now and go check out my YouTube channel and there's d dozens of comments in like the last couple hours of people, cool people reaching out saying, hey, what's up Vic? How you doing, man? Thank you for the videos. And it's just a beautiful thing to have you guys in my life. So I hope you guys had, an, uh, had a... I, 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 I doubt a lot of us had a really easy year. It hasn't been easy for me, but I, I, I hope for you that you had a transformative year. And I trust you have a year where you can look back at the beginning of 2017 and be sort of have your mind blown at where you are now. Sometimes when we're stuck in the day-to-day -day struggles, we can, we can lose that grander vision and, and that, that sight where we can see, wow, even though there's these ups and downs, I... I'm really doing phenomenal and I'm changing at a very profound level. And we're gonna only continue to change at this rate and some even predict even faster and faster and faster. So regardless, I hope you guys had a good year. I look forward to starting the year with you guys in 2018. And I thank you again. Have an amazing day. I will speak to you soon. Namaste.